How's it going gamers? My name is Rushcode and this is Minecraft. And you can see how Minecraft's landscape is procedurally generated. So over the next few videos, I'm going to try and recreate this using what I know in Unreal Engine. It's a big project and I am not going to make anything nearly as spectacular as Minecraft itself, but I do think I'm finally ready to learn how to make a basic version of this. So I got to work and draw up a roadmap for what I think is going to be the stages to making the landscape. I figured the first thing I need to do is know how to make one block and multiple blocks before I get on to making an entire world. So this video is about the first two phases. And you can see here some of the scribbles that I made for building phase one and building phase two. It was kind of messy, but it really helped in planning out what I was going to do in Unreal Engine. Jumping into Unreal Engine, the first thing I made was the control pawn that I would be able to maneuver around the world using the basic stuff that I covered in a previous video about how to make a pawn that can fly around in the world. And then I got to work on phase one and two. So first I fixed the input mode so that I don't have to click the mouse every time I jump into the simulation. And then I did something here called generate block bool array, which is a custom function that I made specifically for phase two onwards. So we'll come back to this in a second. And using a sequence node connected to the event begin play, I essentially did all of these one at a time using the pins 0, 1, 2, etc. So going into phase 1, we have spawn 1 block, where it's basically just spawning an actor, which is a grass block in our case. And I also opted to changing the color a little bit. So when you run this, this is what it looks like. And you can see that while it has a block, it also has this funny thing in the middle, which is what I would call my origin, so that I can tell where the X direction, Y direction, and the Z direction is when it comes to building this in a proper coordinate system. Doing a side-by-side -side comparison without the origin point, here's what the grass blocks can look like every time we run the simulation again. The way I'm changing the color here is by using a scalar parameter known as hue shift parameter and you can see this in the material I made for the grass block. It's controlled by using this node hue shift and giving it a value between 0 and 1 or negative 1 and 0. So I'm just using negative 1 and 0 because the greens and browns are more on that side. So once I figured out how to spawn one block I moved on to phase 2 which is spawning multiple blocks. This was a much more involved process than the previous bit because I had to do a lot of looping. So here we have what you would call nested loops where the x coordinates are all looping inside all the y coordinates which are looping inside all the Z coordinates. If you were to visualize what I'm trying to do here, it would be in three dimensions, where first I would spawn blocks in the X direction, followed by iterating it in the Y direction to spawn the next row of X blocks until I reach the end of it. And once that's done, I would start again on the next level using the Z value as the final iteration in the loop. So in these nested loops, the X values would be the first thing to control where the blocks are going to spawn. I made the first and last index 0 and 2 for all of them, which means it's going to spawn blocks that are at coordinates 0, 1, and 2, meaning we're going to have a 3 by 3 by 3 chunk of cubes. In terms of generating actual blocks, I actually go through this process where I generate something called a block index, which helps me decide if I want to spawn a block at a particular coordinate or not. And if I do, then I go on to merge the coordinates of the block because originally they are just separate x, y, and z values, and I need to actually merge them or convert them into a vector and multiply by 100 because of the scaling in the map. And when that's done, I would go into spawning the block. And this is simply just the same thing as before in phase one, but I've put it into a function of its own. So you can see here it would spawn the block and then create a hue shift. I'm going to switch this off first just to make sure everything spawns so you can see what it looks like. So you can see here we successfully spawned a 3x3x3 three by three by three chunk and I randomized the colors a bit so that it's easier to see the distinction. If I were to run this again with the point of origin, this is what it looks like. So the point here would be 0, 0, 0 and the red is the x direction. So the blocks would have spawned in the direction first, followed by the y direction to spawn the next row and the next row and then it moves on to the next layer using the z direction and repeats the same thing, spawning all of this in the x direction followed by the next and the next y value and then it reaches the top layer and does the same thing all the way through but in order to generate terrain in future phases i needed to make sure some of that functionality was already in place at this phase so this is where generate block index and generate block bool array comes in so first we're looking at generate block index it's just a heap of mats which takes the x y and z value for the current block and connects them and joins them together to form a special integer which then returns as what is known as a block index this 
this block index is used to call an element from an array known as isLoad. This array is generated from the block bool array function. So if we go into this one, you can see here that first it's going to clear it, make sure there's nothing old in there. And then using a for loop, going from the first index up to however many iterations we need based on how big our chunk is, in this case, three by three by three, it would generate 27 random values of zero or one, where 0.3 is saying that only 30% of the time I will get a value of one or the true statement. And the remaining 70% of the time, I would usually just get a false. So the block index would just call one of those values. And then that gets plugged into the branch node, which decides if we are going to spawn a block there or not. So this is what it looks like when the blocks can be spawned randomly. And here's a side by side comparison of just four different configurations you can get with random colors on it. Now that I'm at this stage, I'm feeling pretty excited for what I can do in phase three. So thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you liked it, smash like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Rush code out.